Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Monroeville United Methodist Church. My name is Ed Shenick. I'm the, the senior pastor here, and it is my pl privilege to welcome you and on a beautiful Sunday. Taking uh, your time this morning to join us and to become part of our community. Uh, as we begin our time together, as uh, we've been doing over the last several years now, um, for those in the sanctuary, if you would take out your phones, if you have uh, Facebook and get up on our Facebook page, welcome those who may be joining us and those online. Uh, say hello to the congregation here. Uh, one of the things that I've found has been such a blessing in this time is that we've realized that even though we can't physically be together, uh, the, the Holy Spirit finds ways to connect us. And uh, online is one of the great ways that that can happen. So welcome. Uh, today we also want to welcome Lucas Farron and his family. And we're so grateful to have you here. You look very sharp there, young man. And uh, we're going to have a baptism here and celebrate uh, uh, the new, uh, new person in the family of God and, uh, and uh, uh, pledge ourselves to be the faith community for Lucas as he grows. So uh, welcome to all of you. Um, I also would like to uh, lift up, uh, as we are in this time, there's a few things I'm going to need to go over. Uh, there are pew pads that are on the inside of the pew there. If you would pass them down if you're here and just sign your name. Uh, that's an important way we stay in contact with you, and we really appreciate your diligence with that. Um, and a couple things going on today. Um, we have a new district superintendent, Paul Ritchie, and uh, Reverend Ritchie is going to be installed this afternoon at 3 o'clock at Harrison uh, United Methodist Church, uh, Community United Methodist Church in Harrison City. And so uh, you're all invited to go and uh, be part of that service. Again, that's Community United Methodist Church in Harrison City. Uh, also, this is our last Sunday before the start of Lent. It's hard to believe that, but here we are. So there's a number of things. For those of you who have set up for companions, the little companion packets, uh, we sent some of those out this uh, earlier this week, but if you haven't received it in the mail, it's probably on the uh, uh, little table there as you're coming out into the narthex on the left-hand side. Check and see if yours is there and pick that up, take that with you. Um, this Wednesday will be our Ash Wednesday service at 7 o'clock, and we will have that here in person, also online, if you wish to join us. And this week, uh, actually a week from today, uh, if all goes well, there's a group of us that should be either landing or in uh, Jerusalem, in Tel Aviv, actually, in, in, in Israel. And so uh, as part of our Lenten journey, uh, those of us who are going are going to be doing two things to help you journey with us as we journey with Jesus. Uh, one is that uh, we will be going to the Wailing Wall. Uh, some of you may know there's an existing wall of the old temple. And there, people will go, and they'll bring slips of paper with prayers. And they will pray uh, by that wall and in that courtyard. It's a very sacred space. Um, we are inviting, if you would like, to have us take a prayer for you. There are uh, slips of paper there on the table on the right-hand side as you're heading out uh, of the service today. Um, and uh, if you could drop them in the basket there, we will take them with us and bring them to the Wailing Wall for you. Uh, if you're online, uh, we're going to ask you to make a very small, uh, short <laughs> prayer because we, we don't have room for big pages, but just little slips. Um, if you'd like to send that to us, email, or if you would like to um, uh, mail that to us, do that right away if you would because we want to make sure we, we take that with us. But that's one way that we'll be in touch um, through that time. Also, uh, we're going to hopefully... Uh, we just upgraded cell phones and everything. Uh, would like to get up on Facebook on Live. So uh, if you can check during the week during Facebook Live over the next two weeks, uh, hopefully we'll have installments of the, some of the different places. You can take pictures. We'll be taking pictures of that reading scripture so that you can journey with us as we go. So that group will be leaving next Saturday. And um, I'm going to ask you to be in prayer for us as we journey, um, that all will go smoothly and uh, that uh, uh, God's Spirit will guide. Two other things that I want to lift up to you. Number one, our uh, outreach uh, committee is doing hygiene kits. Those are going to Omcor. And for those who have lost everything, it may be from hurricanes, it may be from floods, it may be uh, right now in the midst of war, 
but those kits go out and uh, will be taken to places where people have lost everything. Those kits, uh, there's information in your bulletin, uh, and there's a, a bulletin board out there. You can see how many kits we have so far. Uh, but your gifts would be greatly appreciated for that. Uh, there's also a fundraiser for our preschool at the Rocket Car Wash. Please take a look at that. Um, out of every $10 for your uh, car washes, we get $6 for the preschool, and that is a huge gift. So think about that, if you would. And uh, also take just some opportunity. There's a lot of things going on in our uh, uh, news blast and in our, our bulletin. I'm not going to be able to cover today. So once again, welcome. Are you ready to worship? Then let us all rise and let us join together in our opening worship. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Come to the mountaintop to pray for God will not keep silent. We there to listen for God's word and to make our response. Come to the light of God's revelation, for we are in darkness apart from God's love. Light shines in our hearts, giving knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Come as God's covenant people who serve and sacrifice in faithfulness. The heavens declare God's righteousness and draw us to the excitement of worship. Okay. We did this song not so long ago. Um, I dare say, don't want to speak for everybody, it's become a favorite of the bands and hopefully a favorite of you too uh, to bring you closer to the Lord. And if you'd like to join us uh, vocally, you can join us vocally in your spirit, in your heart. Um, the chorus does go like this. <coughs> praises arise as we come to recognize Jesus is there glory is here let's worship together
Loving God, open our eyes that we might see your light shine here in this place in our hearts and in the world as we go out this week. Fill us, Lord, with your light that it would shine through all we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Please be seated. Kids, come on up. You're already up here. <laughs> Jackson is ready. I'm going to take this off for a minute here. All right, here comes two more. Yep, you're good. All right, how's everyone doing? Good. You had a good week? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm not completely convinced you had a good week based on that, yeah, but we'll, we'll go with it. Okay, so um, I have a story from the Bible to tell you today, okay? Jesus is, the disciples and Jesus are, are around each other, and suddenly, like a light shines, and it's Jesus with Moses and Elijah, and Moses and Elijah had already, they were around a long time ago, they weren't around anymore, but they're standing with Jesus, and there's all this light, and they're so amazed at what they're seeing. And it was one of these mountaintop experiences. So a mountaintop experience is when something happens with God that just, it brings you so much joy, and you're just so happy about following God. But you know what? They eventually, they couldn't stay on that mountain forever, right? They had to eventually, you know, get back to their, their lives. But what they realized is that Jesus was with them all the time, not just when they're on the high mountain and there's all this craziness right from above, but that Jesus was with them even on regular land, when it wasn't at the top of the mountain, in the valleys, in the low parts, at all times of your life, Jesus is with you, not just at the, the mountaintop moments. And sometimes we need those mountaintop moments to help us continue continue pushing on. And so sometimes you'll have those experiences where you just feel God so present and so you're just so aware of God. And then other times you might not be as aware, but you need to know that Jesus is still with you, even if you can't always feel him with you. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. So if for the little ones um, and like medium ones, <laughs> um, you guys are going to stay in here and watch a baptism and then, Jocelyn, you'll go to Sunday school with the youth, okay? So let's pray. Uh, Lord God, we thank you for today, and we thank you um, that we get to, to watch a, a mountaintop moment for a family. They get to see their, their child baptized and how exciting that is. And we just pray that you will help uh, Lucas and his family to know that Jesus walks with them all the time, just like Jesus walks with us all the time. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, so you're going to, Jackson, sit towards the front. Where's Betty? Oh, Betty's back there. Go ahead. Find Betty. <laughs> Today's scripture lesson is found in the 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 16 through chapter 4, 2, and I will be reading from the message. Whenever, though, they turn their face to God as Moses did, God removes the veil, and there they are, face to face. They suddenly recognize that God is a living, personal presence, not a piece of chiseled stone. And when God is personally present, a living spirit, that old, constricting legislation is recognized as obsolete. We're all free of it all of us, nothing between us and God. Our face is shining with the brightness of his face. And so we are transfigured much like the Messiah, our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like him. Trial and torture. Since God has so generously led us in on what he is doing, we're not about to throw up our hands and walk off the job just because we run into an occasional hard time. We refuse to wear masks and play games. We don't maneuver 
and manipulate behind the scenes. And we don't twist God's word to suit ourselves. Rather, we keep everything we do and say out in the open, the whole truth on display, so that those who want to can see and judge for themselves in the presence of God. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Donna. At this time, uh, Lucas, would you bring your family up with you? And we can just join together right around the baptismal fount. And for those who are in our congregation at this time, if you would pull out this little green sheet that is in your bulletin, um, this service is a service that is for Lucas, for his family, as we celebrate God's gift in Lucas and celebrate their love for him, and then also as Christ's family here at Monroeville United Methodist Church, we pledge to raise him in the Christian faith and to support him as he grows in faith. It's a family service. And so we're so grateful that you're here. I'm going to put this on, by the way, just, just in case. Um, and, uh, but before I do, let me just uh, start out as we begin our time together. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, how does that go? Is that muffled? We all right? Okay. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth by water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. So as we met earlier, I shared some of these questions with you. And so I ask you now, do you renounce your spiritual do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? If so say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil and injustice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. And will you nurture Lucas in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and lead to a Christian life? If so, say, we will. It looks like he's ready to get going already. Okay. <laughs> he looks great today. So, Ron, would you lead the congregation? <laughs> Do you, as Christ's Everybody. body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Lucas before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Lucas with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. So, Lucas, I'm going to touch your head with water in a little bit to remind you. I thought I'd let him know this is coming. To remind you of God's love for you, your family's love for you, and our love for you. And as we do that, we remember the gift that God has given us through water. So let us pray together. Almighty and loving God, your mighty acts of salvation have been made known through water. From the moving of your spirit upon the waters of creation, to the deliverance of your people through the Red Sea. And in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb, baptized by John, and anointed by your spirit, he called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and Lucas, who now will receive it, to wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness throughout his life that dying and being raised with Christ, 
he may share in Christ's final victory. Through that same Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. I don't know. You want to try this? You want to come to me or you want to just stay with your ma? What do you think? I think that's a ma. I think that's a ma vote. Okay, come on, stand up here for a moment. Lucas, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born of the water and the Spirit, you may grow and become everything God is creating you to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the family, Lucas. Can we welcome Lucas to the family? <laughs> he did very well. I think once he knew he wasn't coming into my hands, he was good. So <laughs> Do you want to leave this part? Brothers and sisters, I commend your love and care, Lucas, whom we this day received into the membership of this congregation. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. We rejoice to recognize you as a member of Christ's holy church and bid you welcome to this congregation of the United Methodist Church. With you, we renew our vows to uphold it by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ, that surrounded by steadfast love, you may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in a way that leads to life <laughs> God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you now and forever, Lucas. Let all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Again, welcome. And one of the traditions we have, if you're okay with that, and if he wants to walk down, he may want to do that. Um, could, would you be willing to just kind of show, and if we can introduce you to the congregation, introduce Lucas. That's a lot of people. So, Lucas, you did really well. We have some gifts for you. And um, let me see these first. This is for you guys to keep. And that's the date of his baptism and his baptismal certificate. And then our group from our quilters have made this for you. So that's to remember God's love and ours. So welcome. Sure. Let us continue with the time of gratitude. The time of gratitude is something we have done since the beginning of COVID, and it's a time where we give thanks for all that God has given us, all that we are blessed with, and all that we, in turn, are able to give back to God. The past few weeks, we've tried to change that up a little bit, and yet again today, our time of gratitude is going to be a little bit different. First, I want to offer a huge thanks and my heartfelt gratitude for those that come out yesterday. Our brothers and sisters in Ukraine are suffering and hurting and we here at MUM were in prayer for them yesterday and it was a wonderful opportunity to set in the silent sanctuary with a soft hymn playing in the background or if you were lucky enough to be here when the Ukrainian worship chant was playing was really cool. But it was a blessing under my heart and something that 
as I give thanks to God this morning for living in a country that is free and peace and a country of love that I hope other countries around the world find. As we give thanks though this morning, I want us not only to remember those in the Ukraine, but also we have several brothers and sisters within Russia itself that are protesting, that are standing up for Ukraine. So we need to keep them in our heartfelt prayers this week as well. As we give thanks though, we also have a great joy because we have 15 folks, the majority from this congregation, some that are not, that will be traveling this week, leaving Friday night, Saturday mornings, my understanding, and flying into Tel Aviv. They'll be walking the walk that Jesus walked so long ago. What a phenomenal experience that will be. So we felt it only right to send them out covered in prayer this morning. So I'm going to ask that anyone that is here today that will be traveling, I know Michael's here, Ed's here, is Tina here? If you'll come up. As I read the names of those that will be traveling, we've got a candle on the altar that will be lit in prayer. That candle will be lit for every Sunday they are gone until they're home safely with us. Because this is a phenomenal opportunity for each of them, but also a very troubling time in the world we live in. Those that will be going are Pastor Ed, Alicia, Tina, Michael, Lori, Tammy, Sharon, Lois, Pat, Alita, Pam, Betty, Ruth, Joshua, and Paulette. Let us take a moment of silent thanksgiving for the journey that they're about to take, and then we will bless them with prayer to send them off. In pre-COVID days, I would have invited you, the congregation, to have joined me at the altar and laid hands. However, in the midst of COVID, I don't feel that that is the appropriate thing to do. So I would ask you just to reach out a hand toward those at the altar and the lit candles as we pray. Lord and Father God, may your spirit work within and surround those that are traveling to Jerusalem this week. May the opportunity be that of a lifetime. May your presence be ever known to them. May you fill their heart, their soul, and their very spirit with your love, your compassion, and your protection. Send them forward in these coming days, anointed, prepared, and protected by the Holy One, Jesus Christ our Lord, our Savior, Mother, Father, Creator, and Sustainer. Amen. Let the weak say I am strong Let 
Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the blind say, I can see. It's what the Lord has done in me. Let Let the the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the blind say, I can see. It's what the Lord has done in me. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. Into the river I will wade There my sins are washed away From the heavens mercy stream Of the Savior's love for me I will rise from what is deep Into the saving arms of God I will sing salvation songs. Jesus Christ has set me free. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. the poor say I am rich let the blind say I can see it's what the Lord has done in me As we come together now in prayer, and I want to thank you for the prayers for those of us who are traveling. Uh, I do want to just say a quick note. There weren't a lot of us here. There's a reason for that. Um, They are all sequestering because we have to take a COVID test coming up right before we go. So these are the brave souls that are willing to be part of the service, and uh, hopefully we will not test positive. Um, But they're all there online, and so I want to welcome them to the service today, and thank you all for your prayers. Uh, And during our prayer time, we remind ourselves that God is here and that there is a presence that as we become attentive to, fills our souls and guides our lives and is not just with us, but with all whom we lift up in our concerns that God is the God of the universe and God of the world. So as we gather now in this time, I'm going to lift up the prayer request that we have, that we've been praying for on our prayer line that we are aware of. If you're joining us online, or even if you're here in the service, and would like to lift up a prayer request, get on that Facebook page, uh, and just put their names or the situation in the chat. Uh, Our prayer chain follows that right after the service and brings that out to our congregation. Once we finish uh, with the prayer request, let us join together in a requested hymn and a loved hymn of the congregation, number 700. We'll uh, abide with me. We'll sing the first four verses of that, and then we'll pray together. So let us open our hearts now to the one who is with us. Loving God, we lift up those concerns on our hearts and joys. Lord, we give you thanks for for Lucas and for his journey today and pray for your blessings to continue to go with him and his mom and his dad, the family, as he continues to grow in faith. And may we be a strong faith community for him. Loving God, we, we lift up those who are grieving in our congregation today. Especially we lift up Karen and Mike Marcy, 
Christian and Sean Emmerich and their family following the death of Mike's mother, Mary Petey, uh, this week. And Lord, our visitation is this afternoon, the service is tomorrow. Surround this family, Lord, as they grieve and, and are in shock. We pray for those in need, and we have lifted up already the siege in Ukraine. How out of control the world seems to be sometimes, Lord. And for the violence and for the losses and the death and the suffering, loving God, draw close and be with them. Help us to know how to help and support them. And guide those who have power, Lord, with your spirit, that they may use that power with love and with mercy and with grace, that we may begin to seek peace. We lift up those who are in need, both around us and also around our world, those who are poor, starving in Afghanistan, those who are in our neighborhoods without enough food. Lord, stir our hearts that we might share the abundance you have given and surround those who are seeking refuge with a place that they can call home and a place that is safe. We lift up those who are ill and those who are suffering some from COVID and others from many other illnesses. We remind ourselves that Jesus, in him we see you. Jesus touched and healed. So we ask for your healing to surround each of those situations and be with those who are caregivers and be with our medical personnel as they continue to stretch to meet the needs of, of such a hurting society right now. We do lift up prayers for the travelers to the Holy Land and for safe journey as we travel. We lift up specifically Grace, Corrine, Bill, Diana, Allison, Cliff, Harriet, Diana, Jane, Rob and Claire, Harry, Marlene, Val, Carl, Jack, Dot and Leroy, Don, Sean, Sam, Julie, Jeremy, John, Megan, and Tanya, and those who are being named now both on our chat line and also those being lifted up silently in our hearts. Surround each one with your care, your love, and your grace. We pray.
loving God who throughout the ages has walked faithfully with your people. It is you who created us. It is you who has redeemed us in a love that will not let us go. And it is you who journeys each day and each step we take with us and with all your children. In the midst of this world, Lord, we make bad decisions. In the midst of this world, we face brokenness. In the words of this world, there are injustices, there are things that are violent and frightening. And yet the testimony has been still throughout all that you are faithful. And that while evil has power, it does not have ultimate power. For there is a light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not, has not, and will never overcome it. In that faith, Lord, we come to you now. And in the places where we are struggling, may your light rekindle hope in our souls. In those places where we struggle, where we see darkness, may your light enter in. And where we see no light entering, may we become that light. As you have called us to, as we follow your example, your Lord, our Lord, your Son, Jesus. So, Lord, hear our prayers as we gather now. And those we silently lift to you. God of faithfulness and love, empower us with your spirit now that we might trust your light in our hearts, in others, and in your world. Shine brightly, Lord, that all may know the good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray together by saying, Our Father, who, is art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today is sort of a day in between in our church year. It's what we call the Transfiguration Sunday. It, 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 it's in between Epiphany, which is what we start right after Christmas, a time when we think of Epiphanies are aha moments, when we see something new or fresh in a fresh new way. There's this child who was born in Bethlehem, and the question up till now has been, who is this Jesus? And as the Spirit, and as we move through each year, we, we hear that Jesus is the Messiah. The light shines, and we begin to see anew that Jesus is the Messiah. Lent shifts us, and that's what we start next week. From the question here is, what is the Messiah going to do? And what we find is that the Messiah is going to bring salvation, but in a way that nobody expected at the time. God doesn't do things the way we often think God should. So our scripture of this reading parallels that in between time, the first half of the gospel, the stories of healings and miracles, and the question, who do you say I am, has just been asked of Jesus to the disciples. And Peter responds, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah. But then Jesus says to them, the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and death and will be arised in three days. What will Jesus do? To which Peter says, forbid it, Lord. That's not the way we do things. And he says, get behind me, Satan, if you remember that place. By the way, he doesn't say, get out of here. <laughs> get behind me is the role of a disciple. You need to learn, is what he's saying to Peter there. This is the very next story, and it starts in Luke chapter 9. I'll be starting with verse 28. Let us open our hearts that we might hear God's word for us. Now, about eight days 
After these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up to the mountain to pray. And while he was praying there, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. And suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking with him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which was about to, he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake and they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him, and just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. And while he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered into the cloud. And then from the cloud, a voice came, that said, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one of any of the things they had seen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And while he was praying, his face changed, and things became a dazzling white, and suddenly they saw Elijah and they saw Moses there. And a cloud came and overshadowed them and they were afraid. And a voice boomed out and said, this is my son. Listen to him. Wow. That's a picture. It's a picture that's painted of a time to come, but it's a picture that's pretty overwhelming. Something major is going on here as you read this in the scripture. And there is a lot that's going on. It has to do with who Jesus is. This is my son says God the Father. It's not by accident that this occurs right after Peter's confession. You are the Christ. It confirms that. This is my son. This is the Messiah. You remember at the very beginning of the story, Jesus was being baptized, and they heard the word of God come again, the Father, and say, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. He was beginning his ministry. It confirms his ministry. Here, this is my son, listen to him, confirms his passion. It's that transition place and where he will go. And Elijah and Moses are there, and they're talking with him about his journey into Bethlehem and to a cross and how he's to do that. What Jesus is about to do isn't apart from the law and the prophets. It fulfills it. This transfiguration time, I think, is a critical place. And I view it almost as a little Easter. It's an opportunity to see that the power of God does break through. It's an opportunity to see the light that shines in the darkness and to have the confirmation of God that says, yes, this is what will happen. Listen to him. The Son of Man, the Messiah, who you think is going to go and lead this big insurrection and take over the Roman government, is actually going to go to a cross and die. And you're going to think everything's wrong. But listen to him. There will be three days and he will rise. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. Look at the brightness and take it in your heart because things are going to get rough and you're going to need to hold on to hope. A hope that goes deeper. A hope that will bring you through. I think this is a really important place to see the light and to take it with them. This is my son. Listen to him. And it comes right after Peter's refusal to hear it. The son of man must suffer and die and be raised again. Forbid it, Lord. Who of us would say anything different? That's not the way God's supposed to be. God is all powerful. And we see power as power over, don't we? But God sees power as power and love. And that acts differently. That's a love that lifts others. That's a love that sacrifices. That's a love that reaches out. That's a love that refuses to sever relationship. God says, my love and my power are like that. And I think when we think about that, it, it doesn't make sense to us. I remember uh, when I was in uh, an earlier parish, there was that movie that came out. This is, I'm dating myself a bit, but remember uh, Mel Gibson's uh, The Passion of the Christ? Pretty violent movie, actually, but actually they said that it was fairly close to a lot of what really would have happened. 
But I remember going to see that at that time, because that's what all our churches did. If you remember, we all went out, and I remember one of our young adults at the time um, looked up and saw that, and, and, and we were debriefing afterwards, and he said, I kept, in that scene on the cross, I kept thinking, come down, blow these people all the way, you're God, you can do that. And it didn't happen, and I really wrestled with that. The way we see power and how we use it, and the way God sees it, are different. I think of Isaiah, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As high as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. But they gathered around the cross, and they said, come down from the cross, and we will believe you. See, that's that power. That's how we see you using it. Certainly, you wouldn't die. God doesn't suffer and die. They taunt it, and it seems to make sense to us in the way we see it, but the reality of this world is that this world does not have ultimate power. Remember what Jesus said to Pilate? My kingdom is not of this world. If it was, what would my disciples be doing? They'd be fighting. But you have no power over me. In our world and in this in-between time, evil has power. We just saw it unleashed this last week where people are killed and where there's violence and where there's suffering. We are in a broken world. Like this scripture, we are in an in-between time. Christ has come, but Christ has not come again. When Christ comes again, there will be heaven and there will be a, a, a way of a new birth, a new heaven and a new earth if you're looking at Revelation. A new way of life where everyone aligns and does God's will. But we are not there yet. And so we just prayed the prayer our Lord taught us, saying, Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. If it was already here, we wouldn't be praying that, amen? We live in an in-between time, and evil has power. We have choices, and we can choose the wrong thing. We can take power and use it in ways that God does not want us to use it, devoid of love. But we need to remember the light. We need to remember our transfiguration days. See, the disciples were called to go back into the world. They were called to take the journey with Jesus into Jerusalem. And they were called to begin to learn the deeper truth that new life doesn't come without death. You can't have a new life without letting go of the old. Suffering is part of the journey. It's not apart from it. And that there's a God who says not, and I, I wish the great act of God was that God took away our suffering, but that's just not true. I, I wish the great act of God and, is that God prevented death, but that's, that's not true. The great act of God that we profess is that God meets us in the valleys of the shadow of death, remember, and leads us through. That there is a Christ that goes to a cross and there's that empty space in between, that dark night of the soul where we don't know, but there is a celebration on Easter Sunday because the light will shine in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. Amen. That's what our faith is about. I was looking at a video, I was going to run it, but it was a little bit too long, unfortunately, today, by, by a Lutheran pastor, author, and theologian. Her name is Nadia Boltz Weber. And she has a, has a video that's out called Defiant Hope, and I love it. And she talks about the basic confession. She said, the basic confession of the Christian faith has to be that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot, did not, and will not overcome it. It's what we're about. She said, it's not a vapid optimism. It's this void of any type of, of, of power, this kind of happy thinking where we choose not to see the evil things in the world and just be optimists. But hope is different. She said, it has a defiance to it. It says, yes, I see the evil and the injustice, and yes, I see the violence, and yes, I will respond to it, but there's deeper things going on here. Hope is saying that the, there is something deeper and more powerful going underneath. That's the light and it will overcome the darkness. It's a choice of will. It's a choice of stepping into it, and a choice that makes all things new. That's the testament of our hope, our light, and our faith. So what does this all mean to me? I honestly, I think there are days when I feel like a disciple at the foot of the cross. Have you ever been there? 
It's where it looks like evil is one. Where we see suffering and we feel powerless to stop it. Where we have situations that we can't seem to get ourselves out of, but we've got to get through. Days where it seems like things are lost. There are days I feel like that. And I don't think I'm alone in that. We, we, we want peace, but we want it our way. We want God's will, but we want it our way. And it doesn't happen. Like these last days, as I watched an army march into Ukraine, as I see the violence that goes on in the Holy Land, when I see the violence that goes on in our streets, and the hatred that I hear, there are days where it feels like I'm at the foot of the cross. And yet, there is a hope. There is something deeper going on here. And that's what we believe. That the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. And yes, I saw an army marching into Ukraine, and I saw people coming around to support in every way. I get a call from my lay leader going, hey, can I open the church for a prayer meeting? Can I, I look in the, around the world and I see protests all the way around. I see people moving and coming together and suddenly I see a light in the darkness and I see a Holy Spirit that will win. Amen? And we can be a part of that. There's something deep going on here. The light and he was transfigured before them. This is my son, listen to him. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot, did not, and will not overcome it. Amen? And if we don't see the light, then brothers and sisters, let's choose to be it. Amen? Let us pray. Loving God, the journey of life is not an easy one. There's struggles, and yet it's precious. There's places of pain, and yet there are places of bravery and courage and love and healing. There are times when we reach out our hand and we feel that we're alone, and yet there is your promise that says you are never alone. Fill our hearts with your light this day, that we may carry it into the darkness of the world, Brighten our hope with your spirit that we may serve as your people this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us all rise and let us join together in our closing hymn.
friends, we've been given a whole new week by God, a whole new time of life. So let us go into it with confidence and joy. Let us go into it in love. And even in those dark places, remember the good news, the light that shines in the darkness. And may it fill our souls. The blessing of God, the one who created you and who's redeemed you, will sustain you, will shine through you now and forever. So let all God's children say, Amen. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you.